Welcome, Elk Kids. My name is Pastor Evalani, and we are in our All Aboard series, learning what it means to ride with Jesus and be all in with Him. But before we get into our lesson, I thought I'd hit you with some train knowledge. Yep, that's right, train facts. If you didn't know, today trains get moving by steam, diesel, or electricity. But if you're Thomas the Train, it's a whole lot of heart and a little bit of magic. I'm just kidding, he's a cartoon train. But anyway, back in the day. Whoa, 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 not that far back in the day, like maybe a couple hundred years ago, trains got moving with the help of humans, horses, or simply gravity. Thank goodness we've moved past that because pushing a train sounds awful. Next fact, did you know that the fastest train in the world is found in Spain and it hits a top speed of 400 miles per hour, but operates at a steady 350? That is a fast train. Okay, last train fact. Did you know that you can find trains underwater? Yep, it's true, but not like you're thinking. In New York City, instead of throwing old trains away because you can't because they're huge, they clean them and put them in the ocean to become reefs for cute little fishies. Now you know, and you're welcome. Okay. I'm gonna be honest, I got a little sidetracked for a minute there with all the cool train facts, but not to worry, I'm going to get us back on track and focused. Let's go over our Bible verse for our series, which is found in John 14, 6. And it says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I love this verse. Jesus is telling us loud and clear that he is the only track that gets you to heaven. There is no other way. See, when you board a train, you know exactly where it's going because a train must follow the tracks it's on. In life, we are going to face difficult times and challenges and it may be hard for us to stay on track or know where to go. Who knows, we may even get distracted and take the wrong path. When we trust in Jesus and live a life that honors him, we can be sure he will guide us in the right direction and get us where he wants us to be. It's easy to think your way might be better, but riding with Jesus will show us that his way is always best. All right, guys, let's check in with Pastor Taylor because he has a very important Bible story to tell you and a great lesson that we can learn from it. Thank you, Pastor Ivalani. What's up guys, Pastor Taylor here. I hope you guys are loving our All Aboard series as much as I am. I've got a story today that I think that you guys will find amazing. We're gonna talk about a parable. A parable is a story that Jesus tells to illustrate a point when he's teaching, right? And that parable today, it's about two people who made two very different decisions, okay? so. It comes to us from the book of Matthew, and that is chapter seven. So if you have your Bibles, turn with us there. Jesus was teaching crowds upon crowds of people, and he was using these parables to relate to them in a way that wasn't really happening at the time when they were being taught by their teachers of religious laws. Jesus had a really great way of helping people understand his Father's will and how we should be living as disciples and of followers of God. Oh, back to the story, back to the story. So Jesus talks about these two people. Both of these people wanted to build a strong, long-lasting home for them to live in. All right, so I want you to picture these two houses right next to each other, right? Pretty close by, like, like neighbors, okay? Now, both of these houses, let's say they actually look pretty similar. You know, two-story, kind of nice, snazzy-looking homes. The only difference was at the very bottom. In fact, some people probably wouldn't even notice that there's a difference at first glance, but that first house is built on a solid rock foundation. See, the builder had taken his time to really make sure that the foundation of the house that he built was going to hold up the home that he planned to build on top of it. And as such, this house was pretty close to an awesome beach, right? Let's say he's got this pretty sweet view of a blue, vast ocean that his neighbor has. But the builder had a feeling that someday a storm would hit and he would need to make sure that his home was gonna be able to withstand it. So, you know, maybe he doesn't get that view quite like he asked for. But then there's this second house, right? And again, the home looks pretty close to the first one. But this builder, he wanted to make sure that no matter what, he was gonna get that ocean front view. Even if the foundation of the home wasn't as solid, right? So. 
he decided to build his foundation right there on the beach in the sand. By show of hands, how many of you guys have ever experienced a storm? Okay, pretty much everybody, right? So you might've guessed what happens next. See, it's not if, but it's when a storm hits. And Jesus said in verse 24, that anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds their house on solid rock. Verse 25 continues, Though rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. He goes on to say that, but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Jesus encourages us to stay on track by following his teachings, following his ways, and believing in him. It may not always be the most popular decision, the most flashy decision, but it will keep our lives from falling apart when life storms hit us hard. So let's be all in and all aboard for living our lives like Christ asks us to. All right, that's it for me, guys. Pastor Ivalani, sending it back to you. Welcome back. I think we learned a valuable lesson today, and that is that we have to be willing to do things God's way, and that means our way isn't usually best or right. We want to be wise and listen to God and his instruction for our life. When we do it our way, we will end up like the foolish man who built his home on unstable ground and ended up with nothing. We have to trust in God and stay on his track, not our own. You know, I was thinking, just like any fine-tuned engine needs work, we do as well, and we must always be checking our heart and allowing God to work in and through us. Even when we mess up, God never gives up on us and always desires to help us get back on track. Right now, I wanna give you the opportunity to do just that and choose to ride with Jesus. We do this by saying a simple prayer and accepting the gift of salvation that he gives us for free. Jesus already paid the price for us with his blood that he shed on the cross when he gave his life as a sacrifice and defeated death and rose from the grave three days later. If you want to pray with me, you just need to lift your hand on the count of three. So right now, before we do that, let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Okay, there we go. One, two, three. And there we go. Now I'm going to pray and I want you to repeat after me. Can you do that? All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for sending your perfect son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me. I believe in my heart and say with my mouth, you are my Lord. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin and to help me stay on track. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Way to go and welcome aboard the best ride you could ever take. Now, don't forget, none of us are perfect. And if we get off track, Jesus is always ready to help us find our way again. I can't wait to see what we learn on our next stop. That's it for me, L Kids. I'll see you next time. Bye.